Go in here, let me adjust my screen. All right, looking pretty good. Hopefully everyone is, all right, everyone can see this out here. Now I'm learning, each time I do these lives, I get a little bit better. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. So instead of looking at the microphone, I'm looking at the camera right now. <laughs> it's funny, I've been doing this for, I don't know, 10 years or something, and it's anytime YouTube changes something, it takes a while for me to figure it out. All right, well, let's wait for a few people to get on, but if you, let's see, make sure the chat is working. Make sure you can hear me. Well, Arturo says, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. All right, looks like people are starting to hop on. Uh, if you know anyone else who would like to improve their English, who has been struggling to speak for a while and is wondering why they are still not fluent, let them know about this video. We're going to cover a bunch of interesting things and we're gonna talk about D for you. English fluency. Hello, Ephraim, nice to see you there. So done for you, uh, that's basically what this means. You will see this. You've probably seen the, uh, the English, uh, like D-I-Y. Now D-I-Y stands for do it yourself. Do it for yourself. All right, everything is okay with the sound. Glad to hear it. So done for you means that I'm doing something for you. Well, the best English teacher in the world. Wow, you guys are too kind over there. From Saudi Arabia, nice to see you. Well, thank you for the kind words. So DIY means you're doing it yourself. And you've probably heard this if you go to a, like a repair store or something, or you're going to buy some construction materials to build something or fix something yourself. So to do it yourself. But done for you, done for you, means someone else is going to help someone or help you fix a problem by yourself, or I guess <laughs> basically do it for you. So my job really is to do all the work for you, and then you can sit back, relax, and get fluent. So I wanna show you why this is possible, but before I talk about this, I had a, an interesting meeting yesterday with a, uh, I was in a, a Starbucks, just here locally in Nagasaki, and I was sitting next to a, it looked like a Japanese, maybe high school, I guess he was a college student, uh, but he was sitting next to me and he had a, a kind of a typical English textbook in front of him. And it was for vocabulary building and so I started talking with him and I heard he's from uh, just a different part of Japan and he was traveling and visiting Nagasaki by bicycle. <laughs> so I thought that was very cool. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I'm talking with this guy and it was interesting to learn, you know, him traveling around, but I started talking with him about learning English because I said, oh, if you have any questions, let me know. And I started talking with him and of course, uh, once he found out who I was and what I do, he was asking me lots of questions <laughs> about learning. And so one of the things I said is, uh, are you improving learning this way? Uh, let's see, you're really incredible. I like your American English accent. I understand you perfectly. Yes, glad to hear it. So my job is to help you have a similar accent because it's actually quite easy to do this and I'm speaking intentionally clearly. So one of the things we'll be talking about in this video is how to have that better, smoother, more natural pronunciation. So I'm in the Starbucks and looking at this guy and he opens the book, I said, is that book helping you improve your English? So it's basically a, it was like the typical Japanese book where you've got, uh, he was studying for a Japanese test and uh, it has like the Japanese on one side and then it's got the English over here and it's basically giving a bunch of definitions and helping you translate certain words. And after I started talking with him for a while, he said, uh, no, this method is not helping me improve. All right. Uh, and so this is, the same thing that everybody does. This is not just in Japan, this is in China, it's in everywhere in Europe and Africa, South America, and even in the United States or Canada or the United Kingdom. When people travel all the way to these places to learn, they might be learning something in English, but typically they're learning through their native language or they are, well, basically they're trying to translate and learn definitions uh, from English. So however they're learning, it's typically this same way uh, and so I just, it's just funny to think about like I'm, I'm right here next to this guy 
and he's sitting here and I'm thinking, wow, he's just another example of somebody that, that could really use my help. <laughs> so I sat there and helped him and talked with him about learning and I thought I wanted to share some of that with you. So when I talk about done for you fluency, I just wanna compare that with the typical way. So we have an example here, the typical way of learning if we're just going to compare the two. This is, a, so this is the, we'll just put a T here for typical, typical. And make sure you can see, okay, yeah, it's just coming up there a little bit. So typical, let me turn the camera up a little bit. All right, maybe that's a little bit better for you. So typical, and this is the, Really, I'll come up with a good name for that in a, in a second. But the typical way you've got definitions or translations or you're studying rules. Uh, and really, this is more about memorization. And we're talking about uh, usually going from one language to another or we're trying to think and understand the rules of the language rather than trying to understand like a native, which is what this is here. So this, we'll just call this the native way. Now in last week's, if you join me for last week's live video, let me know in the chat because I'm gonna talk about something from that video as well. Uh, in that video, I was talking about the way that natives learn languages. And the reason that most people don't learn a second language, what they call a second language, I don't actually believe there's such a thing as a second language. There are just other languages, additional languages, that you can also learn the same way you learned your native language. And in the typical way that people are learning, so learning, we'll just call this like the student, student way. So the student way that people are learning, uh, they're having definitions, translation rules, memorization, but the native way, you're really just trying to understand something the native way. And rather than list a bunch of things here, it's, it's basically just that, understand the, or here, we'll just put this, understand like a native. So what does it mean to understand something like a native and why should you care about that? All right, so last week in a live video here on YouTube, you can go back and watch that one, I recommend you do. Uh, I talked about like the two different ways of learning the word over. So we have over. So if you're going to learn over like a student, you're going to get a definition, usually just one example of something, maybe one or two, and you will practice saying something again and again. Uh, but in the English, we're going to get we're going to get two things we're going to do one we're going to understand it like a native and number two we're going to get naturally varied review and you'll notice i'm going to repeat these lessons again and again because one thing you do not get from uh, most lessons on youtube is the review that gets you fluent so you will find lots of lessons that teach you conversational or spoken english you will learn real ways of saying different things but knowing vocabulary is basically useless unless you actually review it the right way. So you can get a word like over, uh, and so maybe in Japanese we would learn like ue or something. You would learn some uh, word through Portuguese or Chinese or Japanese or Persian or you know whatever the language happens to be. And then you will try to repeat that again and, and again. So I would have a flash card that says over, and on the other side of the card it says my Japanese or whatever. Uh, and I'm going to just repeat that word again and again, over, 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 so over and over again. <laughs> now, the reason you don't want to do that is because it actually makes you bored and your mind actually doesn't want to hear that word. It kind of forgets the word the more times you hear it. The, the more natural way, the way natives are doing it, they're actually learning this in different ways. So to give you just a quick review of what we did last week, and why it's so important, I wanted to cover it again. So here's just a review of that. So we talked about learning over by getting different examples of it. So what I call naturally varied review. Naturally varied review. Now naturally varied review is so important because again, if you just repeat the same thing again and again and again, it will get boring. So we talked about over, and we talked about different examples of like over and some words with over, like some simple verbs to get you to really understand what over means as a native. 
So if you think like a native, you will speak like one. That's really the secret here. So over, overthink. So overthink is one example. Again, we have the physical. We can look at something. Usually when children learn the word over, so here's a box and we'll put a ball over it. So there's a little bit of space between here and here. The box is over that thing. So if we have this one, you can look at the difference. Oh, the, the ball or the circle is on the box. So this is on. And here the ball is over the box. So usually when native children are learning for the first time, they understand vocabulary like this. They're getting some kind of physical example that they can see. And then they start building their fluency from that. But it takes a few different examples for natives to build that fluency. So natives do not just hear something one time, they hear it again and again, but in different ways. That's the important part. So naturally, varied, let me write this better, V-A-R-I-E-D. Naturally varied review, naturally varied review. So we've got overthink, overthink. Do we remember what that means? So everyone should be thinking, okay, think by itself. Okay, I'm just thinking right now, but we have overthinking. Maybe I'm thinking about something too much, thinking about something too much. Or you know, it could be a, maybe I'm trying to plan what I'm doing. So we could think about it in the same way we're going to have to over plan or overdo something. And again, we're meaning that we're doing something more than we should, more than we should. But without getting the definition, I could just tell you the definition. But the point is for you to discover the definition yourself, all right? Now, this is why I'm not a typical teacher that would just like tell you the, uh, you know, tell you the meaning of something like that, because I really want you to understand for yourself and to discover that meaning yourself. It's like a puzzle that you solve, because when you do that, you have an aha moment, an aha moment, aha. You think, aha, I understand, I got it. So I see this with my two daughters all the time. Uh, they have an aha moment when they realize something. I just sent a letter, uh, an email to people, I think maybe a day ago or two days ago, talking about the word space when I'm teaching my daughters. And it's the exact same thing as this. So they've heard, we, we do a kind of, it's kind of like a game, but we have a, a trampoline in the house and I, I hold them by the hands and they jump on the trampoline and bounce up and down like that. And we call that space jump. Space jump. Now, they don't really know what, what space jump is. And so my, my older daughter came in and uh, both of them actually came into my room a few days ago. And they said, what's space? They're asking me just what space means. And it's because they've been just watching a movie about some spaceships or some uh, some like spacecraft going into outer space. So I said, oh, do you mean the space like up where the stars are? And they said, ah, yes. And so they understood. And, and just then Aria was like, oh, you mean like a, like a space, like a spaceship. And Noel understood finally, ah, I understand what space jump is. Okay. So when you're thinking about this, this is, this is the same way that natives are learning and they're not getting definitions of something. What they're getting is more and more examples and that's how it actually helps them become fluent. All right. <clears throat> so the, the main difference here, we'll cover some more examples just to make this even more clear for you. But the main difference here is in traditional learning, like it's up to the student. So this is like the student, So the student must study and remember. So you really have to be a good student. I mean, that's basically all you're doing here. And you have to work very hard to get fluent the traditional way. But this way, you really need a good teacher. And so the difference, this is done for you. And this is do it yourself. DIY, do it yourself, all right? Does that make sense? I know I'm talking about a few different ideas, but I like to always uh, come back to this same idea. I'm always talking about the same way of learning, but 
I'm trying to give you different examples of people, the same way you would learn English. So the same way you're getting fluent just like a native. So done for you means if the teacher is good, you should be developing fluency automatically. You should feel that every time we learn something new. So every time we think, oh, like to overthink, I'm thinking too much. Or if I over, overpay, like we practiced last week. So I'm talking about different examples of over. I'm not trying to give you a definition. I want you to understand and develop your own understanding of the word over. And that's how you learn to use it fluency, uh, use it fluently, excuse me. So you need a good teacher in order to do this. And now I thought because, because we did over last week, we could go back with a few under examples. So the next thing, when people are learning, usually kids, they're, they're trying to develop patterns. The point of the lesson is to have, understand the patterns of learning. And so once you think, okay, there's overthink, overplan, overdo, overpay, Oh no, I paid too much. I'm overworked. So I am overworked. I work too hard. I'm doing too much. I'm too tired. I'm overworked. I'm overworked, all right? So when you start hearing these, you begin thinking, huh, I wonder, I wonder if there's like underwork. Now, you might not always be correct, but if you're thinking like a native, this is how you start really playing with the language and you're really thinking a lot like a native. And that's really the whole point. So you're developing the pattern and then you start applying the pattern in different ways. So maybe we have an underworked thing. We don't usually talk about people being underworked, but we will say under. Underemployed underemployed. Now, if you know what this is, I'd like you to type that in the chat. Does that make sense? Underemployed. What do you think that means? So there's just employed means I'm working. What do you think underemployed means? I'm underemployed. Underemployed. You can think about that. Just post that in the chat if you have any idea what that means. What does it mean to say you are un, under, underemployed? You're underemployed. If you have any idea, post that in the chat. So we could have under underdeveloped, underdeveloped. Yeah, we could have like under underpay. Usually we don't say underpay again. You won't always have the, the exact example. But the point is, if you're thinking like a native and guessing, maybe that's correct. That's how you start thinking more like a native. So again, you're trying to understand the patterns. So not working, not working. So could mean maybe you're under underpaid, you're underemployed. Underemployed is a really interesting example. We've got... So underemployed means you're kind of working, but not working. Yep. So let's see. Yep. Alice says not working enough, not working enough. Or it could mean that maybe your skills, your skills are like really good. So if I'm, if I'm maybe like a, like a CEO of a company. So if I, let's say I own a company like Sony, just take a Japanese example here. So if I'm the CEO of Sony, my skill level is really high. Uh, but maybe I go down and just start working like selling, I don't know, radios at a store or something like that. So if I'm working at this level, I'm working way below where my like ability level is. So I'm underemployed. I'm underemployed. I'm not using the full power of what I can do. So not using my full skills or my full ability. So this is underemployed, underemployed. So sometimes people will be you know, underemployed or underused or underdeveloped, it means we don't use it enough. So here we have, if we're just gonna look at this little chart here, very continu uh, continuum here. So we've got developed, we've got overdeveloped, and we've got underdeveloped as well. So underdeveloped, developed, and overdeveloped. So if we do something too much or don't do something enough, these are the general ideas here. All right, is this making sense? 
So the point here is that when you start thinking like a native, you start speaking like one. And the way you do that is to understand like a native, not by getting definitions, but by getting more and more examples of something like that. And when you get these examples, I'm right now just like, you're not saying anything, you're not speaking, I can't hear you, even if you're talking to the screen right now, I can't hear what you're saying. But if you do this, you will build fluency automatically. The more examples I give you, the more you should feel, ah, I really get it, and now I can use something confidently. So this is kind of the, the last piece, really understanding how this works. So when you're learning as a student, your job is to try to like speak. Most people think they will just speak and speak and speak and speak and speak and that's, and that's how you get fluent. So they speak to build fluency. But most of this speaking, it just comes from people having to repeat things that they don't really understand. So they hear a word or a phrase maybe one time or they translate something and they don't really understand what they're hearing. And when that, when that happens, when they do that, then, oh, I, 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 they, they get stuck in conversations. Just like this, uh, this college student that was sitting next to me in the Starbucks yesterday. So he knew a lot of vocabulary and he was studying some advanced words. He had just passed an English test, like a Japanese English test, the, uh, like the second level. So almost the highest level, he passed the second level of the test, but he still couldn't speak. And he had every problem that, that most of my learners had. So he had like vocabulary uh, issues. I remember I asked him, what does he want to do? He said, I want to be a tour guide, a tour guide. I said, oh, where do you want to do that? And he said, uh, I don't want to do it in, what did he say? He said like metropolitan, <laughs> So he said metropolitan uh, areas or something like that. Metropolitan areas. And I said, oh, you mean, you mean big cities? <laughs> and again, you don't have to use difficult, difficult words to use, <laughs> you don't have to use difficult words in order to communicate confidently. And natives are often speaking just simply like this. Now I understood what he said. It, it wasn't even metropolitan areas. It was metropolitan something. So metropolitan, like a major metropolitan area. That's the kind of thing you would hear on the news. But in a conversation, we just say, oh, like I'd like to work in big cities. Nobody says, I want to work in a metropolitan area. <laughs> so I just want to, I, I want to live in the city. So the city or in general, in big cities or larger cities. So when you're learning like a student, so he's getting you know, these examples from a Japanese textbook. Okay, he learns metropolitan area, uh, you know. <laughs> and I said, oh, you mean big cities. And, he's, and, and so he's learning right there. Now he, he understood one example of understanding like a native. So if you spend time getting this input, so you can learn to say something like metropolitan areas, but really natives are just saying big cities if you listen to them. And so he had problems with vocabulary that sounded a little bit unnatural. Uh, his pronunciation was also uh, a typical, like his teachers were Japanese teachers, so pronunciation, I'll just write pronunciation right there. His grammar, uh, his listening, uh, and his confidence. So all, all of these things were, were really low for this guy. And, and he was interested in being a tour guide. And so he said, when he, find, he found out what I do, he asked my advice. So he said, what should I do? I said, well, if you're trying to be a tour guide, you need to be outgoing, outgoing. And he had not heard that word before. Maybe you have not heard that word either, outgoing. To be outgoing is like the opposite of being shy. So he was a little bit shy, I said, you should try to be outgoing. You're, you're here welcoming other people, <coughs> excuse me, who might be uh, coming from other countries or it could be other Japanese people that are traveling around Japan. But if you want to be a tour guide, you need to be outgoing, outgoing. So you're working from inside of yourself to out like that. So easygoing is a little bit different. Easygoing means you're relaxed. 
I don't really care. That has really nothing to do with other people. So if I'm easygoing, and again, this is a perfect example of naturally varied review. So if I'm easygoing, as excellent example though, let's put these two together. So we have outgoing and easygoing. Now, if you think about the ideas of these, like outgoing is moving out like that. So you're, you're going out. You're thinking about things outside of yourself, the opposite of shy. But easygoing means you, you kind of relax. You take things easy. I'm easygoing. All right? So outgoing, easygoing, they're both uh, part of your personality. But outgoing just means you're doing things uh, and you're not shy about them. So you can walk into a room and say hello to people, and that's what I recommended he do. So just say hello to people. When you're walking down the street, just practice saying hello, and this will build up your confidence. And I told him how I used to be shy, so I used to be shy also. And I built up my confidence just saying hello to people. So even in my native language, just when I was a younger, you know, living in the United States when I was a kid, I would just say hello to people when I'm walking down the street. And it, I was explaining most people are shy, they don't say anything, so it's nice when someone says hello to you. Then you, you think, oh, that's nice of someone to say hello. You know, they're thinking about me, and you, you don't have to begin a conversation with them, but he was really shy about that and worrying whether, what if they, what if they don't say anything back? And I said, well, I mean, I don't, I don't care. I, I don't expect anybody to say hello back to me. I'm saying hello to them. If they want to say hello back, that's fine. If they don't, that's okay too. So I am, I'm also easygoing. I'm very easygoing about life. So things happen and I don't know if it's like a good thing or a bad thing. I don't really worry about it. I'm very easygoing about life. And so I'm also outgoing. I like to meet people and, and help people and go out and, you know, connect, make connections like that. So easy going and outgoing. So people are posting uh, comments. Yes, I am, I am seeing those. I will go back after I'm finished explaining this and then we will answer questions or uh, review comments, anything anybody has. But does this make sense? I really want, I, I repeat myself. I try to say things in different ways, but really this is, this is the whole game right here. This is the whole secret. And when you do this, like when you're speaking by yourself, uh, you can improve, but most of the improvement is coming from getting all these different examples, all right? So when you're talking to yourself, you have kind of a limited range of what you know. So you might learn a phrase and then repeat it to yourself. People talk about speaking to themselves like that. But maybe there's like, I don't know, two words or three words or a phrase or something, uh, and you, you would repeat that to yourself. But it's a limited... Uh, limited number of words or phrases and in this way this is basically unlimited and as you continue to get more you don't need to spend time speaking to yourself you're getting all the input and it's the understanding that really builds your fluency so in the student way you you have to speak to try to remember what you're learning but you don't really develop more fluency does that make sense like lots of people do this most people do this this is like 99 uh, percent of learners, I would imagine. So all over the world, it doesn't matter. Everybody's learning language is the same way. It doesn't matter what language you're learning. You're basically learning it like this. Okay. So if you're getting, uh, speaking to yourself, you can review certain words. Uh, but the, the interesting thing is like, you don't really Again, because you're not getting the review, it's really the review that gets you fluent, not repeating things, you know, to yourself or others or whatever. All right, so outgoing, easygoing, and the last thing we'll just cover right here as a contrast to this. So instead of speaking, you understand. So you understand more and more from each example, and that's really the key here. So it's getting lots of examples rather than maybe one or two and trying to repeat those. And as you get more and more examples, and this is just one way of getting naturally varied review. You could also uh, hear it from different people. So you hear me say overdue, someone else says overdue, another person says overdue. And again, every time you're hearing that, you develop your fluency automatically, even if you don't say anything. 
Now, of course, the goal is to use the vocabulary you know. But as you understand, you feel more confident, and the fluency develops automatically. So that when you're in a conversation, you just automatically start speaking, because you're well prepared. So I gave another example about me learning Japanese in coffee shops when I started, when I understood this, so I stopped doing this, and I started doing this, and I sat in different coffee shops and just listened to people ordering food. I know it seems like a boring thing to do, but I thought it was fascinating. I thought it was really interesting to get all these different examples of how people would order something. So they might say, uh, I'd like something, or would you please give me, or can I have something? So these different ways of ordering food. And so I can understand that and I'm prepared for that. But often learners, because they only know one way of saying something, they get nervous when they hear something different. So I, they practice like saying hello, like I came to Japan and I was practicing good morning, saying good morning to people, and that's ohayou gozaimasu. So saying good morning to people in Japanese, ohayou gozaimasu. That's the more kind of polite, clear way of saying it. But then I hear just some people don't say ohayou gozaimasu. One guy at my school where I was working when I first came here, he said, he just said, us. <laughs> and I was really surprised. I was not prepared for that because unlike a native speaker, I was not ready to hear, you know, these different ways of greeting in the morning. All right. So instead of doing this, this is, this is a, it's a much more of a hassle and a strain when you're trying to teach yourself and you only know a few things and you're speaking to yourself or trying to review to yourself. It's much easier. So instead of doing it yourself, you get it done for you. And that's why, even if you don't speak, so right now you're watching this live or if you're watching this as a replay later, I'm able to improve your fluency just by the way I'm teaching you. Isn't that cool? So even if you don't speak, so you don't need a live teacher or a practice partner, but you, you are able to use the things fluently when you do have a situation where you, know, you need to speak. But it's because you're well prepared, you understand really well like a native, so you feel confident that you'll speak correctly, and that's how you get fluent. All right? Now let's go back and answer questions if anybody has any. Let's take a look at the chat here, see if I can go down here. All right. Well, let's see, Raza says, sir, take notice of suggestions regarding your attire. Sir, I'm looking forward to seeing you in a charming dress. <laughs> uh, let's see, in, in charming dress. I'm guessing you mean like, like a suit or something like that. Yes, uh, it, I should, I should, people say, hey, Drew, why don't you wear a suit or whatever to teach? And because everybody does that. So the typical way people do teaching is like, okay, we're gonna put on a suit, like it's a business class or something, and I'm going to wear a suit uh, or a tie or something like that. And I'm here to help people learn casually and make a casual environment like we are speaking friendly at a park or something like that. So that's more the mood I'm trying to give people when I teach. I wanna help them relax and not make it feel like, okay, this is a formal thing and, and that's how we have to speak. So I wouldn't worry about, um, like, yes, fluency is not related to charming dress. <laughs> yeah, so I could, there, there's, a, there's a marketing angle like that. So if I, if I dress in a suit, I'm going to, going to have a different, um, like, it, basically the, the different kind of mood or something that, that people would expect from a person who's doing that. So other people do that, and that's fine. That, other people want to do the suit. I like to be relaxed. When I'm, when I'm teaching. I'm actually wearing some shorts over here, but I, I feel very relaxed and it helps me move around rather than being in a suit like that. I've never really liked suits very much and so that's one of the reasons I enjoy what I do. I can sit, actually I can just be in my underwear teaching right now and nobody would know. Amazing. All right, so let's go back and look to see if anybody has some, uh, some interesting comments here. Uh, I just find a good way to practice and I try use passive vocabulary as I'm doing now. Sometimes I talk to myself through the mirror. Yes, yeah, so the talking to yourself through or talking to yourself uh, to the mirror or talking into the mirror, uh, it's less helpful for this reason because you have a limited vocabulary that you're just trying to repeat. When the fluency actually develops, it's really your understanding as you feel like, ah, I get it. I really understand something, and that's how you become a fluent speaker. So if you practice one thing, you feel very confident about using that, and then you get into a conversation, 
And then if that vocabulary is not used, then you're, you're like, uh, 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 oh no, I, I, did, I don't understand what that person said. They did, I wasn't prepared for that one phrase or two phrases or something like that. But as you continue to get more and more, then you're well prepared for conversations. And even in conversations, you will do most of the improvement learning from other people. So if you're talking with natives, it's really the different ways of, uh, of, of them speaking that are going to improve you. Uh, and I'm not the first person to discover this. Dr. Stephen Krashen discovered this as well, as well as other linguists uh, who realized it's really the understanding that gets you fluent. So I don't want to get too technical. There's basically what I call a fluent conversation or fluent communication switch in your brain. So when you understand, you can communicate. And when you don't understand, you feel nervous. It's basically how it works. All right, so let's see here. We've got, I'm gonna go back up to the top here. Let's see if we have, so hello, people, nice to see you there. All right, so I'm going back through the top of these. So from Saudi Arabia, Brazil, Indonesia. All right, nice to see everybody, Algeria. Marco from Brazil, follow you for a long time. Nice, thank you very much. Let's see, uh, Musli from Pakistan, nice to see you there. Claudia from Colombia. I've been to Colombia, actually, it's a nice place. I had trouble breathing over there, though. It was so high up in the mountains. All right, let's see another from Indonesia. All right. So it changed my hairstyle also. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing my hair. It's going to go away. I actually want to shave it off, but my wife won't let me. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see what happens, though. Uh, okay, so I think we got all those up. So you helped me to become a native speaker in English in a matter of two years, something that was also unbelievable to me. Thank you, you changed my life. Fantastic. Yeah, if, you, uh, if you'd like to share your story, send us an email. Uh, we'd love to share just like we, so I shared uh, another learner of ours did really well on the, uh, the IELTS test and I shared that yesterday with learners. So she got, her, her speaking score was 8.5. So 8.5 band, which is uh, like half a point below uh, expert level, which we were really excited about. And so she did that just by following our lessons. And so I thought that was, you know, it's really great to hear people again. You don't have to speak in order to become fluent. I know this is what everybody tells you, but it's, it's basically because people learn uh, like in a robotic way that you have to go back and try to speak to repeat phrases to yourself, but you still don't really feel confident because you don't really understand all these different examples. Uh, and that's not really how you become fluent and confident again about that. All right, so we have Ronica here. Although I know a lot of vocabulary, it's always difficult for me to practice them when I am talking. What should I do, please? So again, <clears throat> I talked about this last week too. That's a good question, Ronica. There are different levels uh, of knowing vocabulary. So you, you mentioned before about passive vocabulary and active vocabulary. Usually what happens, so this is a way of building the passive vocabulary, and this is the way of building the active. And it just means you're able to use that vocabulary automatically, fluently, confidently, without thinking or translating. And so when I talk about learning vocabulary the traditional way, I talked in that last video about planting seeds. And again, it's the repetition that helps people improve. So repetition, but hearing things in slightly different ways. And so each time you learn a new vocabulary word, you plant a seed in, in your mind. You plant a seed in your mind. And when you do that, uh, if you go back and water that plant, like we're doing here. So this is about watering the plant. And so we're giving more and more examples. So it's like adding sunshine and fertilizer and, and water to that plant to help it grow. So it needs attention to continue growing. Now what most learners do is they plant a seed and then they just move on to the next seed. And they move on to the next seed and the next seed and the next seed. And then what happens is this plant dies, this plant dies, this plant dies, this plant dies. And sometimes you will remain, or the vocabulary will remain in your passive vocabulary because it's easy. Maybe you heard something before and you recognize the vocabulary, but you can't really use it when you want to. And so people will, because they're learning this way, they keep going to the next word, the next word, the next word. <clears throat> and the reason they do that is because focusing on one word is boring. That's basically the reason this happens. And so, 
when you go on YouTube, so you can look on YouTube right now, uh, just search like learning vocabulary or something like that, and you will find most things. It's like, here is, here is a 50 vocabulary words. Here are 100 vocabulary words. Here are whatever. And the reason people make these videos is because is students naturally want to watch them. All right, so they naturally like, I want more vocabulary. Give me more vocabulary. Because if I say, hey, I'm going to teach you the same vocabulary, you're going to get bored and not be interested in that. All right, so your mind naturally is, is looking for new things all the time. This is why, like for marketing and selling and for making videos on YouTube, uh, everyone talks about new. So it's, here's like new vocabulary for you. But again, the problem is, uh, if you're not reviewing the vocabulary, then you're wasting your time. So you spend 10 minutes watching a video or an hour watching a video teaching you a whole bunch of new vocabulary, but why did you do that? It didn't help you learn anything. It didn't help you build an active vocabulary. So what, what's, how, can we, how can we get both of these things? So how can we learn a lot of vocabulary? So we want a lot of vocabulary. A lot of... So we want a lot of vocabulary, and, and here's the important part, plus we want to remember, we want to remember, I'll just put a B in there, remember that vocabulary as well. All right, does this make sense? So in this, you're getting a lot of vocabulary, but the words just disappear over time. <laughs> so it's like this, like you start here, you learn some words, and then after, this is kind of your, your memory for the past day or something. And so you learn it like today you remember. But two days from now, you will, you will have forgotten this vocabulary over here, all right? So to learn a lot of vocabulary and remember that vocabulary, this is what we do. So each one of these things, we're focusing on something, but we're getting the naturally varied review that builds your fluency automatically because we're coming back to something again and again. So we're giving it that sunshine and the water and the fertilizer, we're giving everything it needs to grow into a, a lovely, healthy plant that you remember, that you can use in your conversations without thinking. And we do that, so each one of these things is actually a new word. To overplan, to overthink, overdevelop, overpay, overdo something. And then we talked about doing, uh, doing under something, like being underdeveloped or underemployed. And as you start getting all these examples, you don't, you shouldn't do just like random vocabulary. This is not the way to build an active vocabulary. So if you learn like a phrase over here and then something completely different, and then a completely new phrase, and then a completely new thing over here, that's not going to help you get fluent, okay? What actually helps you get fluent is learning the same thing in different ways, all right? So this is how you get a lot of vocabulary plus remembering what you learn. All right, does that make sense? Let me know in the comments if you understand this idea because it's really important. And uh, what I do is really for the kind of learners who want to speak and for the kind of people who don't want to waste their time watching a bunch of random videos and actually want to develop fluency automatically like this. So I can get you fluent, guaranteed, if you just follow this. And if you think there's some reason why that would not work, let me know in the comments. I'm always curious what people's response is. Because you can see just by learning this way, the, the improvement is actually instant. As soon as you understand something, you can actually feel that happening. And that's a regular, um, really the biggest benefit of doing this. So you know for sure that it's working. When you learn this way, in the back of your mind, you're always wondering, like, is this really helping me improve my fluency? I'm learning a lot of vocabulary, but I don't, I'm, not, I'm not improving my fluency. And this is the reason. So you're learning, you're putting more words into your passive vocabulary. Most of these words you will forget, but some of them you will remember. Most of them you will not use fluently. All right? So this is why when you want to actually build vocabulary, this is how you keep your mind engaged. So you're learning, ah, I really understand something, overpaid, underpaid, uh, things like that. So I'm learning, ah, I, I really understand what something means. So you're not using a translation or a definition, you just understand it. It's like you know it by heart, you feel it, and again, that feeling is what gives you the confidence, okay?
All right, really make, making sure everybody gets it. So right, let me scroll back up, make sure if anybody has any questions over here. Uh, some week after COVID-19, I stopped seeing you post new videos. Well, there are new videos uh, on YouTube. I've been posting for a couple, for a while now. Um, and also uh, on Instagram, have some videos over there too. All right, let's see. So sir, have a class on direct and indirect speech. All right, I'll, I'll mention very quickly about like grammar points like this. It, when, you're, when you're learning, again, everything is the difference between how a student learns and how a native learns a language. As a student, it's like teach me like direct or indirect speech. But natives are not thinking like that. They're not thinking like, well, how, how do I use indirect speech or direct speech? They're thinking about examples and what kind of situations am I speaking in? Okay, so they're thinking like the, the example before of me at a coffee shop, all right? So the situation is someone ordering, ordering food at a coffee shop. So that specific situation, how can we think, all right, so what are the different phrases that we can use in that situation? This is how natives are using the vocabulary. This is how natives are learning the vocabulary. So when I go to a, a coffee shop and I have my two daughters there and I'm ordering food, they're learning that for me. But they're also hearing other examples of how people do that. So they hear like, may I, may I have something. So may I have a coffee, may I have an espresso, something like that. So that's a more polite one. You might hear a less polite is can I have. And you get this from the mood, all right? So you're, you're really, you're feeling the whole situation rather than someone just telling you in a textbook about, okay, may I have is when you order food. Because who is saying that? It's a little bit maybe more polite person. Are they dressed a little bit better? Do they, do they speak a bit more maybe slowly and confidently? Are they older? Are they younger? So you can look at like uh, a, younger, a younger kid would maybe speak faster instead of can I have. They might say like, kid... Nye, let's see, nye, and they will say nye, have. Can I have? 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 So if you're learning like a student, you will read in a textbook, can I have? Very clear English, but in a regular conversation, can I have? 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 Can I have the milk? So if you're eating dinner with the family and, and someone says, oh, can you give me the milk? Can I pass the milk? Something like that. So you would write it just like Mauricio has right there. Can I have? But and again, when you're speaking it, the speaking changes. And the only way you get this is by learning like a native, by understanding like a native. All right. Let's go back. Let's see. All right, so knowing that you've lived in a foreign country, I want to ask you, how can you do, because after five years living in the U.S., I still struggle for natural conversation, despite that being doing my best or still too early. All right, again, this is a perfect example. This is many of the people I helped, so let's see. Rigoberto, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Rigoberto, trying to put a little, little Spanish flavor on that. So let me know where you're from, like maybe uh, South America or uh, Central America. Let me know where you're from. So uh, Rigoberto has a very common problem. So I have lived in a foreign country, so like living in the United States for a long time, but I still can't speak. So it's been five years living in the United States. So let's see, move to uh, the United States. Here you are. So this is five years. Uh, and so probably know a lot of English, so he can write and communicate, but uh, it's been a while uh, and still can't speak. And so he's thinking, well, maybe, maybe like at, at a certain point. And this is, this is the, most, <laughs> the most dangerous, really, I, I call this dangerous. We'll just say dangerous up here. The most dangerous thing about the traditional way of learning like a student is that it just feeds your hope. Because you don't, you don't ever really feel that you're improving. You continue to learn more. Let's see if I can sneak this. I'll just erase this over here. So you have a timeline like this, the same kind of timeline here. 
and you're learning more vocabulary, but you're kind of like this. You're not actually improving your ability to communicate. So natives are learning more vocabulary and their ability to communicate goes up like this over time. So what's happening? What's the, what's the difference? So why is a learner, they keep learning more, but they're not becoming better speakers. And that's the reason I gave before about how you learn vocabulary. So if you're learning, number one, through your native language, number two, through basically traditional methods where you're trying to study vocabulary rather than really understand it like a native. And uh, most people just don't know this is possible or they don't believe it's possible. And they don't know it's possible because most people teach the traditional way and they say you have to speak a lot or you have to live in an English-speaking country or something. But as uh, Rigoberto just gave us an example, uh, you can live in English-speaking countries and still struggle to speak. Living around natives is not the secret to becoming fluent. It's understanding like a native. That's the secret. Okay? So lots of people, again, they know a lot of vocabulary, but their actual ability to communicate is not very good. And it's because they learn like this. And they keep hoping, again, the idea is like you keep learning and then somehow, somehow, people can't really say how it, how it, how it happens, uh, they get fluent. But what's really happening is each time as you learn vocabulary like a native, so like we had the word under, all right? So again, the first time you learn a word like under, you've got, so here's a box and the ball is under the box. The ball is under the box, all right? Or you could also say below, but we'll just use like the, just under for this example. So you see something, ah, there's kind of some space here, and I recognize, okay, so under, the ball is under the box. The ball is under the box. And now once you hear that, you begin building fluency as you hear more examples, like something like this, like under, a spell. Ooh, I'm under her spell. Under her spell. Under her spell. So to be under a spell, it's the same kind of idea. You're under something. There's, it's like someone puts some magic, they cast some magic on top of you, uh, and so you're under a spell. Or you might be under the influence. Like under the influence of some other person. So you can think about like someone else is controlling you almost like a puppet, like that. So they're dangling the little strings and moving you around like that. So to be under the influence, you might also hear this of like, so under the influence of a person or under the influence of something else like alcohol. So we don't drive under the influence of alcohol. So it means something else is controlling you. So you're under the influence of alcohol. Maybe you're drinking too many beers, you start driving, uh, and so that's, driving under the influence. You're under the influence, all right? Or we might have, let's see, if you can think of any other examples with under, but the point is uh, you might have anything where you're, you're learning and you're slowly, actually it's not even really slowly, it's really just as quickly as you can get different examples, but the more examples you get, the more naturally varied review you get, the faster you get that, uh, that's the fastest way to get fluent. It's really the only way to get fluent because this way just gives you hope. But this way you actually feel more fluent each time you get an example that you understand. You feel it, all right? I get, I get like, like excited about this because you actually feel it happening. There's no need for hope. If you build a little bit of fluency each time, then very quickly you're gonna, you're gonna become a good speaker. And so this is what natives are doing. So natives, each time they hear something, they build a little bit more fluency. Okay, so they build a little bit more fluency, a little bit more, and boom, like now look at the, the difference between them. So my, uh, like my uh, two or my three-year-old or my uh, six-year-old children can speak better than many learners uh, under, under, un, uh, underestimate, underestimate. Very good. So another word. So you're starting to learn that. Again, this is how children learn the language. So a young child doesn't know what underestimate means. They, they kind of understand, maybe they hear something, but only as they get older, they're like, ah, to estimate something, and then to underestimate something, or to overestimate something. Okay?
And it's the more examples that you get, the more that you really feel confident, like you own the language, just like a native does. You don't need to be a native to learn like a native, okay? Does that make sense? This is really important. I know I say that a lot, but it's, if you understand this one idea, you can really become a fluent speaker very quickly because you don't need to live in an English-speaking country. And for my, my own story, so similar, so I came to Japan and was living here for almost one year, learning every day, trying to practice, learning the traditional way, the dangerous way. So I, I felt hope. It's like, wow, I'm learning all this new vocabulary, but in a conversation, I couldn't actually express myself. It was really frustrating. My pronunciation was bad. My grammar was bad. I couldn't understand what people were saying. It was really frustrating. So especially if you have to you know, give a speech or you know, if you're using uh, English for professional purposes, uh, it's really frustrating when you can't communicate. And so for this, this first part of this year, uh, I was not struggling, even though I'm in an, uh, like a Japanese-speaking country. So I'm surrounded by Japanese speakers. Every day, I'm living in a native in environment. We call this immersion. And people think, ooh, immersion. If you live in that country, if I go to France, I'm going to speak French. If I go to, you know, wherever, South Africa, or I go to, you know, wherever, I'm going to speak the language easily. But it doesn't work like that. Being in a place with a lot of speakers is actually more frustrating for most people because it's, it's all just coming at you all the time. And you can't sort it out. You can't figure out what people are saying. It's hard to understand. And when you can't understand, you don't speak. When you can't understand, you feel shy. All right? So again, instead of trying to hope, you should be feeling a little bit more fluent each time you learn some new vocabulary. And when you're learning it, like this. So you're focusing on something, you're getting naturally varied review. Overwhelmed, another great example. So really like the immersion is actually overwhelming to many people. It's overwhelming. If I put you in Taiwan and you don't speak, you know, the language, then you're, you're just walking around like, ah, this is like people speaking, you know, Cantonese or Chinese or whatever the language, you know, could be other languages, could be people speaking English there as well. <clears throat> But the point is you're overwhelmed. You're overwhelmed by this. Overwhelmed. And so when you're living in an English-speaking country, if you still learn the native way, or you still learn like the, the traditional way, excuse me, then you're not going to improve. But if you learn, which is what I did, as soon as I discovered this, this is, this is my moment of discovery right here, discovering this, that you just need to understand like a native. And you don't need to be a native to do that. And the amazing part is, I keep saying this again and again, because look at this. It, this way is so much easier <laughs> if you have a good teacher to just give you this every day. Now, anybody can, can answer this in the chat. If you got this, if you could work with me every day without trying to practice over here, you don't need to say anything. If you could get me telling you every day, teaching you a little bit more like this, wouldn't you become fluent? If I could teach you just a little bit, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or more, just the same way I'm teaching my daughters at home, wouldn't you become fluent? Now, if I'm a teacher in a classroom and I'm trying to teach you a bunch of rules, you're probably not going to get fluent, even if you come for two hours a day. But just by getting this, teaching you and helping you understand the language naturally, you would become fluent. Now, people say like, so again, like Allah is saying like without any practice and like this is the practice. The practice is the understanding. You don't need a separate thing where you try to use what you're learning. The point is like if you understand it, that's how you're developing something. That's how you really develop the fluency. The fluency learning. So all this, each time you learn something new, you actually feel it in your mind. You feel it in your head like, oh, like I really understood something like that. All right. Now I'll give my one of my favorite quick lessons about this. I, I've probably done this too many times, but I love this example uh, about the, the idea that you need to practice something extra. And it's a perfect example. If you've seen this before, don't ruin it. Don't spoil the example for other people. But I'll give you this example right quick. 
Again, if you've seen this before, don't say anything. Don't spoil it for other people because it's a really perfect example of how you can learn something the right way. And once you understand it, that's the fluency. The understanding is the fluency. Okay? I know that sounds weird because for years and years you have been told, well, you have to go out and speak. But speak what? You're not like people are teaching you what? They're giving you one example of something to say. You don't feel confident about using it. You can't say it correctly. Your pronunciation is bad. These are all the things that happened to me because I was learning that way. And so let me just give you this very quick example to show that you don't need to spend time speaking to understand something. If you understand something, then the speaking comes. Speaking is the result of understanding. It's not the cause. And again, I'm not the first person to discover this, but this is how we all learn our native language and this is how you will become fluent in English if you just follow this basic thing. If you will basically let me teach you. <laughs> and if you learn this way, so I had to try and do this myself when I was learning Japanese. So I had to use the method and just kind of develop the method and get that information myself. But now it's basically done for you because I've created this whole system that you can use all by yourself. And so you don't need to live in an English speaking country. It doesn't matter where you live and you don't need to go out and practice. The practicing is not going out and finding people to practice with. The practice is just sitting back and understanding like a native. So let me give you this example. So if you, again, if you've seen this before, don't spoil it for people. All right. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to teach you a new language. So these are numbers you already know. And in, the, uh, in a traditional language lesson, I'm going to just give you a translation. So that's what I'm going to do right here. So you know these numbers already. These are the Arabic numerals. Uh, and then we're going to give you a new language of letters, and I'll just call it an alien language, and you can see if you understand what that is. I'll give you a minute. Try to memorize this. So this is my example of a bad language lesson where I give you information but don't really help you understand it. Okay, so here we go. We're going to give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these are your new numbers in an alien language. And I will give you a quick minute as I go back and look over these. Uh, and then I will erase these and I will give you a test. Yes, so without any practice, yes. So the, this, this is like what I call like the holy grail of, of language learning because the whole point is you just get understandable messages. It's just a system that helps you learn the same way a native does so you understand the same way a native does. And when you do, you feel confident so that when you do have a, a situation where you're speaking, you will feel confident and prepared and ready to communicate. All right, let's see if I missed anything. I lived in Korea, but don't speak Korean. It was so hard. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I have a lot of vocabulary, but my speaking is very rusty. Yeah, typically rusty means like you, you spoke or you were able to do something before, but now you are not. That's the, that's the actual meaning of rusty like that. So something gets rusty. That's, again, another reason why you learn something as a native, so that you use things correctly and you feel confident about using that. So just like a real uh, rust is like you know, something gets old, like a car gets old over time. So it used to look good. It used to be beautiful. But over time, it got rusty. So when you say, I'm rusty at something, like I used to speak Portuguese, but now I'm rusty. It means you used to speak well or pretty well, but you've gotten worse over time. But if you were never good, then you can't really say you're rusty. All right? I'll give you one more minute. I'm giving you extra time. See if you can memorize those. Don't write them down. Just try to remember them. And then we're going to erase them and give you a quiz in just a second. All right, let's see. Hi, how to learn like a native since the student learning is my habit. How with a change this habit from my childhood and teach my kids? All right, so very good question, Vincent. That's what we're talking about in this video. And the basic idea is that the way you teach your kids, uh, let me see what your... All right, I don't, it doesn't say what, your, what your, your native language is or what language you teach your kids, uh, but when you teach your kids, like you probably just help them understand the language without giving them grammar rules or make them write or things like that. You make the language understandable. Everybody does this automatically when they teach their own children, but they don't do this when they try to learn a language. So if I could be, I'm like kind of like your parent or whatever. Okay, so Aaron has like some symbols or something like that. So you already know those already. 
Uh, but again, here we go. It's quiz time. Let's see if you can figure this out. So I'm going to give you a, a bunch of these different numbers and just write down or you can let me know if you remember them if it was easy for you to get. All right, can you translate that? Quickly now, quickly. Go ahead, write it down in the comments if you know what they are. Let's start here. What is this? So I've given you 10 of these over here. Can you translate that? One. <laughs> All right. From my, from my very bad language lesson, I'll give you one more minute. Was this easy for people? Five. I need the whole thing. What numbers are these? 249. 249. There are 10 numbers here. You should write, write the whole thing. All right. Was that easy for you or difficult? Was it easy or difficult? No clue. <laughs> no clue. All right. Be honest. No way. Okay. Now, why was that? Why was that a bad lesson? A bad English lesson is depending on the student to remember something. A bad teacher, basically, I hate to say bad teachers, you know, but it's, it's the lesson that makes it very difficult. All right? So the teacher will put some information, like here's my word in the native language and here's your word in English. Now go home and memorize that. That's what typical lessons are like. So it's putting pressure on you to understand something that is just very difficult to understand. All right? Bad teachers always say malarkey. <laughs> malarkey. That's a funny word. I, I, li I like to hear something like that from learners. Uh, but this is what people are usually doing when they, when they give you a language lesson. This isn't teaching you anything. It's telling you information, but it's not teaching you anything. Okay? Helping you understand that's what good teaching is. Okay? So we had these examples before. I'm going to translate this for you now since I know what these are. So this is going to be 1, 8, 5, 2, 9, uh, 7, 8, 7 again, 2, uh, and uh, 6. All right. Now, everyone who said it's impossible, why is it possible for me? Why is it possible for me? How do you think I learned these differently than what I taught. I'll put the examples back up here so you can look at them again. Now, this is not a real language. This is just an example, just so you can see how this works. So we'll put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So just imagine, like if I'm teaching you in Japanese, it'd be like one, two, three, four, like that. I'm going through all the, the characters. And the teacher would just say, okay, remember that. These are the, these are the words, and I want you to remember that. But that's not teaching you anything. That's not teaching you anything. It's putting information up that you could get anywhere and it's not helping you really understand that. So let's do this again. We'll put this again up here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. So I'm able to translate that because I remember these, but how do I remember that? Okay. Are you ready? Now watch. Now when I'm, I'm going to show you something right now and you're going to feel something in your brain when I show it to you. You're actually going to feel like, ah, like, okay. I just want to prepare. Are you ready for this? Let me know if you're ready and I'll, I'll show it to you because I, I really want you to be prepared so you notice this. This is the feeling you get when you learn something and you should be feeling this when you're, when you're learning uh, and when you're uh, like when you're, when you're learning a new language, if I just do this, you don't feel anything from this. Okay? Here we go. I'll put my example in blue up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, 
if I put a bunch of English or you know Arabic numerals up here, you would be able to translate those very easily. All right. So you actually felt something in your mind when I showed you this. Ah, you're thinking, ah, okay, I get it now. That's why this is here. So number one is this shape. Okay, is that the dap? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, do you feel that? Did you feel something? Let me know if you felt something there. You should. Did you feel something? Who felt, who felt something? Just let me know to say yes. Yes, if I, if like, ah, like something hit you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Very good. Even the dap. If that was that was like dap worthy. Eureka! Outstanding. Look at that. Very good. All right. Now the reason I give people this example is because it is the difference between learning a, like a traditional lesson and then learning like where you actually understand something. Okay. All right. Really, really powerful stuff here because the point is. As you're learning, each time you're learning something, so if you watch a YouTube video and you don't feel like this, then you're wasting your time. You should feel like this each time you learn. So when you hear a word for the first time, you might not understand it. But as you hear something again and again in slightly different ways, that's where you build the fluency automatically. And each time you learn something, you think, I got it, I understand now, okay? So that's how you can actually feel much more confident about using what you know. Uh, from South Africa, okay. All right. So what, 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 do you, what language do you speak? Is that uh, uh, Swahili or something else? Probably English as well. You got Af Afrikaans over there. All right, so this is how you learn. And, and again, you are not an alien, but you just understood like an alien, all right? Now, this is just an example, the traditional way of learning, where they're going to give you translations. If you're learning English through your native language, you are wasting your time, okay? You should always be learning in English and understanding like a native. Ah, Lesotho, okay. Any questions about this? Any questions at all? I'm starting to lose my voice. I'm an English teacher watching you from the uh, Dominican Republic. Very cool. Yeah, lots of uh, English teachers follow my channel. Actually, a lot of, uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of, lot of English people, a lot of, uh, even, even some natives might watch it just for fun because I'm crazy like that. <laughs> I'll get native speakers that'll watch videos like, why am I watching this? I'm a native speaker. <laughs> well, Bogota, let's see. All right, so how can we develop the system that way? All right, so here's how I did it for learning Japanese. So when I learned Japanese, again, uh, once I discovered, like, you must understand, like, a native. If you want to So you must understand, I apologize for my writing, I'm trying to be quick with this. I know it's kind of boring when people take time to write. You must understand like a native if you want to speak like a native. <clears throat> and so there are two ways to do this. First way is you can do it by yourself. And you can do this by getting, again, you want to get the real vocabulary that natives are using and you want to get naturally varied review, naturally varied review. There are different ways to do this, but as an example, just one way on YouTube uh, is you're focusing on a particular thing, like let's say fixing cars. So you stop watching English learning videos on YouTube and you go right here on YouTube, you can do this on YouTube, uh, you go to like channels that are talking about fixing cars. Very easy. And then you watch like 10 different videos about that. So it could be uh, even something specific, like fixing a, a particular kind of car or something like that. So this is just one example, and you can get more specific. So like a Toyota, Toyota Prius or something. <clears throat> so go on YouTube, how to fix a something like that, or how to build a birdhouse, or how to do whatever. It doesn't matter what your, uh, it's not, not just narrow. The point is that you're getting the real, so the real vocabulary, all right, so that's what you need to understand like a native. You need to have the real vocabulary. 
and then you need to understand it like a native. So you're not getting rules, uh, you're not getting definitions, you're not getting translations, you're understanding it in context. So get the real vocabulary, understand it in context, and then this is the most important part, the reason we have many different videos is you need naturally very review. So once you get naturally varied review, it's the review that builds your fluency automatically. So content-based, it just means you, it's, I'm trying to explain it in a, in a simple way that, that is really what natives are doing. So right now, whatever your native language is, think about how you learn in that native language. You're getting real vocabulary. So you know, maybe from television shows or movies or you, know, you watch the news or something like that. And then you're understanding it in context. So I'm not telling you a translation. You're, you're understanding it kind of maybe generally the first time you hear something, you might not understand it, but then you hear it again and again, and your understanding gets even stronger each time you do that. Okay? And then that's the naturally varied review. So you're hearing something again and again in different ways. All right? So if you get this, this is how I got myself fluent in Japanese. So it's possible for you to do it by yourself in English. You just, you pick a topic, whatever that thing is, and you focus on that, but you get it in different ways, all from English. So you don't watch like English videos about, you know, whatever, I learned malarkey from Biden's speech. Perfect, that's an excellent example of learning new vocabulary in context. And if you understand it, you should feel that at that moment where you're learning something like, ah, I got it, okay? So again, this is how you do it by yourself. This is how I got fluent in Japanese. So just like that coffee shop example that I gave before, we have uh, different ways of saying, how do you order something in a coffee shop? So I might say, may I have, can I have, or do you have something like that? These are all different ways of doing something around a particular theme or idea. So just like the example I gave before about over, so you begin with a very uh, simple idea. Here's a box. There's a ball over that. All right, so there's space between here. You understand the ball is over the box in a very simple way. This is how native children are learning. So malarkey means just kind of like silly stuff, you know, like people are, people are saying nonsense, you know, that kind of thing. And again, it's better instead of asking what does malarkey mean, you want to have a... Uh, like just see lots of examples of malarkey used in context. So different people using it, and you understand not from the definition. I know it seems like a quick thing to get a definition, but you actually develop fluency when you really understand something. So not getting a definition of it, because the definition is never really as clear as what you find in a dictionary. Because natives will use things in different ways, and you will say, hey, that's not in the dictionary. But natives still speak like that. All right, so the ball is over the box, or the circle is over the square. And then you start learning that, so native children, they hear this first. And then they start thinking like, well, this person is over me, like in the company, or I'm an overachiever. And they start building these, they start making connections. It's almost like a little web between all the different vocabulary. And so that's why when natives, natives will kind of forget vocabulary, or they will think, What's a good way for me to say this? And if they can't remember one thing, they just easily switch to something else, just like you do in your native language. Okay? So let me see here. All right, so, so if I missed any comments down here. <clears throat> I agree with you, that's how I've been learning English. Learn a second language the same way you learn your native language. Yep, that's it exactly. So is it more helpful to learn mostly entire phrases instead of individual words? No, not necessarily. You, you, will, you will learn, like, the, like, I, like the, the example I gave before using under. So you learn under, like the physical, the square is under the circle. But then you learn words like underachiever, underappreciate, and you think, ah, it's like less than it should be. And so the, the, the meaning becomes stronger in your mind because you're thinking about it more like a native and less like a learner using a dictionary, okay? So the point is not to get, it's kind of like if you watch a movie and I say, oh, the hero wins at the end. 
Everybody knows the hero wins in the end of the movie, or most movies, but you watch the movie for the story. So you want to understand what the story is. And so it's the story as well when you're learning vocabulary. And the more examples you get, that's what builds your fluency automatically, even if you don't speak. So you could watch a bunch of videos about fixing cars and that would help you learn a lot about fixing cars. And it would also improve your vocabulary. Because you would see, ah, like a guy pronounced it a little bit differently. And this guy used this word to describe something. So you're building a network of vocabulary in your mind. All right. <clears throat> uh, more than tips, success is within our grasp. Yes. So the point here is not, is not to like, I mean, my, the, the tip, like the, the basic tip is understand like a native and you will speak like one. That's the, that's the most fundamental thing that I teach. If you can understand like a native, you will speak like one. And it really means like, ah, like I understand what vocabulary means without having to translate or think like that. I think like a native. So when I speak Japanese, I think like a Japanese person. I'm thinking not in English, I'm thinking in Japanese if I need to think about something, all right? So again, this is the first way you can do this. If you're trying to do this by yourself, it is possible. It takes a while and you just have to, uh, let's see, how much do you charge for online lessons? So what I do, again, this is, this is way one, which you can do by yourself if you want to. So what, what I do, in a program called Fluent for Life is that I basically give you all this and just like all you have to do is go through it. So I've done all the work of finding like, you know, videos about fixing cars or whatever, that kind of thing. So it's real conversations. You actually learn how natives speak, but you get the naturally varied review. So it gives you everything you need to actually go through the system without me having to be there live teaching you. So you don't need live lessons. You don't need a speaking practice partner. You just need this. You just need to understand like a native. That's it. So if you would like to get fluent, I don't have a, uh, a link in this video because it's live, but I will put a link in this, but you can just go to EnglishAnyone.com <clears throat> and you will see a link to Fluent for Life right there. All right. So if, again, Fluent for Life, the point of this is to save you lots of time. <laughs> so for me, when I learned Japanese, I didn't have anyone to teach me. I had to, uh, I had to understand this and then try to teach myself the language, which is, it's actually quite difficult to do because you, you know, it's nice if you have someone there to, to teach you and to show you things and make everything easy to understand or say, no, don't use this, use this other thing instead. So if you want that, that's what Fluent for Life is. And Fluent for Life, uh, so the, the two main, like the biggest great points about the program, number one, it's like, me uh, being there right with you as you learn. And then the second point is that you can learn about almost anything you want. So there's so much content organized in there that you can learn about business English for professional purposes. You can learn about giving presentations or marketing or sales, or you can just have uh, like learning how to have conversations about relationships and family and dating and other things like that, or going to the hospital or other things. But it's all learning the same way a native learns. And so you don't need to be in an English speaking country. You don't need to have a native speaker uh, who's there with you. You can do this anytime. So it's like me kind of personally teaching you in your home, available at any time of the day or night. If you wake up in the middle of the night and say, wow, I want to learn something, then I can teach you that. But it's just going to the videos, going through the steps, and you build fluency automatically, just like I've shown in these videos. So when you understand like a native, and it's really just by getting, I'll put these steps up here again. So whether you want to do this by yourself uh, or you want to do it with me to save a lot of time and a lot of ha like headache and hassle. So remember, the three things that you need, usually I do this as a triangle. I call it the fluency triangle. So the first thing you need is you need the real, the real, so the real vocabulary that natives use, all right? If you're learning, like at the beginning of this video, I talked about the, the Japanese college student that I met at Starbucks, uh, and he was talking about wanting to not do tours in metropolitan areas. And I thought, I was like, oh, I understood what he said. I said, you mean big cities. <laughs> and so I, it wasn't like laughing at him. I was just, it was a perfect example of using, he was kind of over speaking. There's that word over again. He was, he was, communicating too much. He 
He was using vocabulary he learned clearly from a textbook instead of just communicating naturally as natives learn. So you have to get the real vocabulary that natives are learning if you want to understand and communicate like natives. It's that simple. All right. So the second thing is you need to understand it like a native. And this just means when you're, when you're getting information, uh, you're learning it in context rather than uh, having translations or definitions or get, just learning a bunch of rules that you try to memorize. And so like the first time you hear something, like if I, if I give you a Japanese lesson right now using this, like I would not teach you Japanese using your native language. I just give you like maka, maka, maka. Kuroi maka, aoi maka, aka, akai maka, aka, ao, kuro, kuro, ao, aka. Now, the first time I give you that, you might be like, hmm, I, I kind of understand what Drew is saying, but yeah, I need maybe some more practice. And that's why, the same way native children are learning, you get those examples every day. And so, without you having to say that to other people, if every day I come back and practice with you, you would get fluent in Japanese. Okay, it's the same thing in English. So that's helping you understand like a native. And then the most important part here, this is the naturally varied review. Naturally varied review. So if I'm going to give you something like this, I don't want to just use the same thing again and again, maka, 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 maka. All right, so it's actually taken from the English word marker, but they don't have that pronunciation in Japanese. So in Japanese, they say maka, maka. So akai maka, aoi maka, kuroi maka. But I want to give you that naturally varied review. Kuroi shatsu, kuroi maka, kuroi shatsu. All right, now slowly your mind should be thinking like, oh, like black marker, black shirt. Now, even if you can't say it just like I did, it doesn't matter. The point is you're building that fluency because you can feel the improvement each time I give you a new example. And very soon you just naturally want to speak because you understand what I'm saying. All right? So the point is not to, to like learn a word and I'm just going to repeat it to myself over and over again. You want to get fluent automatically, guaranteed. I do. Would you like to get fluent automatically guaranteed? <laughs> I mean, that's my goal as a learner. I don't want to waste my time trying to study vocabulary, but then I can't use it. I can't remember it. I can't say it correctly. I want to get fluent guaranteed if I'm using my time. So that's what this is. This is how you got fluent in your native language, and it is how you will get fluent in any other language that you learn. It doesn't matter if it's Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, French, anything. So if you learn another language the same way you learned your native language, you will speak it like that too. Of course, it will take some time, but this is the fastest way to do it. Okay? So just by getting more and more examples, so you get the real vocabulary, you understand it like a native, you get naturally varied review to build that fluency automatically. Any questions about this? All right? So this is what I do in Fluent for Life. That's too high for you. Okay, Fluent. What is your accent? Oh, you're asking somebody else. All right. Now, I'm losing my voice over here, but if you have any final questions about that, let me know. But this is it. This is the, the Holy Grail. If you've ever seen that movie, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, they talk about the Holy Grail. So this is like the, uh, the cup, the cup of Christ. When people talk about the Holy Grail, they're searching for like the, the amazing thing, like the fountain of youth or some like magic pill or magic bullet. But this is it for fluency. This is as simple as it can get. So if you need real vocabulary, naturally varied review, and then understanding it like a native. So if you only get two of these things, you don't get fluent, all right? So if you don't get real vocabulary, then you won't, you won't make, you won't understand natives or understand, uh, you know, people in conversations, and you won't be able to communicate automatically, all right? Or if you get real vocabulary and you understand it like a native, if you only do it one time, you're not going to become a fluent speaker. You need to get the review. Okay? Let's see. So I've I got a question. How do we let's see. 
How do we make sure we find the real material so that we can speak real English rather than the textbook one? Yeah, the Holy Grail. Uh, so the, if you, if you want to know if it's real English or not, like our native speaker is using the vocabulary. Okay? So what I'm speaking right now is, is what a native would say. So if you're learning with a textbook or you're look, learning with like an English lesson rather than me learning like I'm teaching you like a parent would teach a child. So the same way I teach my own children, that's how I teach in Fluent for Life. Okay? So my own daughters, they, they will hear something from me many times, and that's how they become confident about using it. And they still ask me questions, and they want to know how to say something or what something means, and I'll, I'll help them understand it like this. So the same thing I'm doing with them is what I do with you in Fluent for Life. All right? Any questions about this? before I finally lose my voice over here. All right, so remember, you can do this by yourself. It's certainly possible. It's just a lot more difficult, and when you don't have anyone to help you do it, again, like anything, it's much faster if you have someone can just show you and have it all prepared and ready for you. So if you wanna get Fluent guaranteed, that's what Fluent for Life is, all right? So obviously it does require some work. You have to watch a video or listen to something, you know, but it's much better than traditional lessons that are just going to give you things to memorize, all right? So let's see, does it mean that you don't use big words in daily life like encapsulate or metropolitan? Uh, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, in, in general, it's, it's, about no, it's about using the right word for the right situation. And so when you're speaking casually to someone, a native would, it would find that unnatural like, say, like, oh, where do you want to live? It's like, yeah, I want to live in a big city. You could say metropolitan area. You could say that. It's not incorrect, but it's unnatural, all right? So that's the, that's the difference. It's not about using only short or small words. The point is to use the right thing for the right situation. And that's why when you understand like a native, you're learning for the situation. So when I go to a coffee shop, there are many different ways you can ask for a coffee or a sandwich or whatever. All right? It's not just one thing that you say. But the point is, if you say something that's like, you know, here are the, the general things you might say. May I have? Can I have? Or do you have something? If you say something out here, it could be correct, but it might sound unnatural. All right? So this is for people who want to speak naturally, who want to understand natives. Uh, who have to actually uh, really use English in their everyday life. So people who are frustrated by living in the U.S. or Canada and they've been living there for a long time but they still can't speak. Or if they want to understand, uh, you know, movies and TV shows, that kind of thing. So Sebast uh, Sebastina says, how can I get real vocabulary? So again, two ways. The first way is just watching what natives watch. So content for natives rather than content for English learners. So my, my videos, my lessons are kind of in between that. So it's, it's using a very simple process to help you understand like a native, but it's giving you native vocabulary. So you can go on YouTube right here uh, and look for things, but it's just looking, looking for it in English. So looking for content for native speakers rather than content for English learners. <clears throat> All right, makes sense? So it, there's, it's also like lots of vocabulary. So the other example I got about using big words, there's, there's a time when you should say metropolitan area. Like you might hear that on the news or if you're a, a real estate agent or something. Oh, oh are you, would you like to live in a metropolitan area or a rural area? So again, it's, it's not the vocabulary. And this is why when you understand like a native, you, you know how to use the right vocabulary at the right time. It's not about the word itself. So learners are thinking about vocabulary by itself or by themselves, you know, just individual words or phrases. But natives understand that sometimes it's good to use this word and sometimes it's not. All right? Like New York Metropolitan, like that. So metropolitan area or Metropolitan Museum. Or the New York Mets, the baseball team. That's what that's short for, Metropolitans. All right? So if there are no more questions, I think I will shut it down for now. But if you have enjoyed this, please like the video and share it with anybody else who would really like to understand how this process works. Uh, this covers everything. So it covers pronunciation, vocabulary, 
grammar, listening, speaking confidence, and obviously fluency. So let's say I've learned how to make perfect shido gohan. Thank you, English, anyone for time to review. <laughs> Learn how to make perfect shido gohan. <laughs> so some white, white rice, white rice. All right. Thank you, guru. I'm not a guru. Remember, I'm just a regular, regular guy who figured this out. But it's, again, it's the same way everyone teaches their own children. People just think it's not possible to learn this way with a different language. Okay? You're welcome, Nestor. I'm happy to help. All right? So this is, again, I care about this because I spent 15 years learning languages the traditional way and not being able to speak. It was really frustrating for me, and I know how frustrating it is for uh, the system is a native fluency blueprint. So there are basically two programs. I'll just answer this one question. So the native fluency blueprint So I have a few different uh, if you go to englishanyone.com we have a few different programs uh, and you can read more about those there uh, but the, the kind of two most popular ones so the native fluency So the Native Fluency Blueprint is really about helping you improve your communication habits without learning more words or grammar. So you can become a better speaker today, very quickly, in like the next few hours with the Native Fluency Blueprint, all right? But Fluent for Life, so Fluent for Life is really helping you learn everything that you need to become a fluent speaker, including vocabulary and grammar and all that stuff. So this is my complete system for learning. This is really more tips and strategies to help you improve your pronunciation. So it teaches the one rule for pronunciation. Uh, and again, like it's the, like Speak Like Me is included in that where I show you how to communicate like I do. So everything in Native Fluency Blueprint is also in Fluent for Life. So Fluent for Life gives you everything. And it's like less than the cost of a one-way ticket to the United States. <laughs> So if you, if you want to have me like teach you and show you how to do this, I, I walk you through everything for really any kind of topic you would want to learn, that's Fluent for Life. But if you want to try something just uh, to really improve with the vocabulary you already know, because most people, again, they know a lot of vocabulary, but they don't use it very well. And so I show you how to use it better in the Native Fluency Blueprint. So it just depends on what your, what your interests are. Uh, but both of the, these are our, our two most popular programs. So if you'd like to learn more, you can click on, uh, I guess there's no link yet, there will be one in the future, but just go to englishanyone.com uh, and you can learn more about the Fluency Blueprint as well as Fluent for Life. All right, now before I die, I've been talking for 97 minutes already, oh my goodness. But look at this, if you improve with this video, you absolutely enjoy and improve with Fluent for Life. It's a lot more of me, but going into actual, the actual vocabulary and teaching you lots of things, thousands and thousands of words, but helping you understand it like a native so you use it fluently. All right, Sebastina, nice to see you again. Thank you. Thank you all for joining me. It's been a pleasure. I gotta bounce. That's true, gotta bounce. Bye-bye. All right. Muy bacanos. Sus videos. Muy bacanos. I don't know what that means. I'm guessing that's, uh, you're talking about my videos. I guess I understand some of that Spanish. <laughs> but hopefully that means good. All right. Anyway, well, thank you, Aaron. Nice to see you there as well. And again, it's been a pleasure. Enjoy your day. And if you'd like to get fluent, especially if you've been struggling uh, to learn and you really want to become finally a fluent speaker, this is how you do it. And the way Fluent for Life works is it will get you fluent in that vocabulary uh, in the next 30 days or less. So this month, if you'd like to be speaking fluently, get fluent for life. All right, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.